In 2019, Eric Ten Hag took Ajax to the semi-final of the Champions League for the first time since 1997. And after implementing a style of play that combines the beautiful possession football of Pep Guardiola and the aggressive defensive solidity of Jurgen Klopp, Ten Hag has caught the attention of many of the biggest clubs in world football. And with Manchester United in danger of going on their longest trophy drought for 40 years, this video will explain why Eric Ten Hag will be the man to end that drought. And if the United board want to bring success back to Old Trafford, they must employ the Dutchman. When I say Eric Ten Hag's style of play is a combination of Pep and Klopp, I don't say it to exaggerate. When we look at what Ajax do when they have the ball, Ten Hag makes use of many of the same positional play principles adopted by Pep Guardiola and many of his disciples. A 4-3-3 with all horizontal and vertical zones of the pitch being occupied, building out play from the back, wide players holding the whip, eights in between the lines, having a fullback invert so your CDM isn't alone in the middle of the park, maintaining compactness, positional rotations between players all over the pitch, combinations on the side, switching play out to the flank for an isolated player to take on someone 1v1. These are all staples of Ajax's team, but they're all things that you'd associate with a Pep Guardiola team. All those things are elite tactical elements, but even that alone isn't enough, right? The fact that the Ajax players understand these things show how good of a coach Ten Hag is. It isn't easy to get players to be able to execute that at the highest level, which Ajax have been able to do in the Champions League. Pair that with the fact that Ten Hag has made sure that his team is filled with technicians all over the pitch who can actually execute these things at a high level as well. In possession, this Ajax side is no team to mess around with. But it gets even better because when they don't have the ball out of possession, Ajax look a lot like Klopp's Liverpool. Ajax pressing an aggressive 4-3-3 shape and the 4-3-3 press is one of the more difficult presses to implement because it requires a lot of different cogs to all be spinning at the same time in order for the machine to operate properly. Typically, there are two ways in which teams usually mess this up. The first way being that the wingers don't support enough and so it ends up looking more like a 4-5-1 than a 4-3-3. The problem with this is that the striker alone at the top just has way too much to do. They don't have enough support. And so the opposition team centre-backs usually will have just way too much time in the ball and you can't really control possession. This is something that Manchester United have struggled with a lot since Ralph has come in. Our press often looks like a 4-5-1 and we allow the other teams to have way too much possession. The second way in which teams will typically mess this up is by not having their fullback supporting the press. It's all good and well having your wingers doing a good job of making sure the centre-backs don't have too much time on the ball. But if the centre-backs on the other team have an easy pass out to their fullbacks who maybe are playing a bit higher up, then you've practically done it all for nothing, right? And so you need your fullbacks to step out of the back line and push and press those fullbacks to properly squeeze the pitch. This is something that Aston Villa has struggled with since Steven Gerrard's come in. They have a really nice narrow 4 for 3 press, but the fullbacks don't do a good enough job of supporting it. Whereas if you look at Liverpool and Ajax, both of those teams have fullbacks who will very much push up and support the press to effectively squeeze the opposition. So cool, Ten Hag has shown at Ajax that he understands what the top tactics are in football, and he's also shown that he can effectively coach them to allow players to understand them and implement them on the pitch. But let's not be foolish. This is Manchester United we're talking about. We've seen what some of these players have done this season. We don't have the players to be able to do what Ten Hag wants to do on the football pitch. And this is where Ten Hag will run into one of his first biggest problems at Manchester United. Transfers. Getting in the players he needs to be able to play the style of football that he wants. The likes of Sancho, Donny, Shaw, Fred all seem like the sort of profiles that Ten Hag would like in his team. And there are some other players who definitely have valuable traits that he will want. But of course, with some of them, it will take time to adjust and learn his ways. But the harsh reality is that there will be players who quite simply just will not and will never fit the kind of team and system Ten Hag wants to play. And so those players will have to be phased out. At Ajax, Ten Hag had one of the best management structures in Europe in order to allow him to simply focus on tactics and coaching. Overmars as the director of football and Edward Van der Sar as the CEO is the kind of structure that Manchester United lacks. Now, as much as United have made some changes in order to improve their structure, Ten Hag would very much have to pay more attention to the types of players that are being brought in to guarantee that they are the right kind of profiles to fit his system. 
There's no doubt that Manchester United and the Glazers will provide the new manager with the budget, but it's all about how that manager uses the budget in order to supplement the squad. We all know that these things can go wrong, but I personally have no doubt that Ten Hag very much will understand what these right profiles are, even in a new league that he hasn't experienced before. Check out this quote from an interview of Ten Hag in 2020. Ten Hag was asked about Pep and he said this, only once in his career has Pep made a mistake. His first year at Manchester City when he underestimated the power and speed of the Premier League. He realized you can't play the football he loves without a couple of physically strong athletes, so he brought them in. He's not stubborn, yes, he is stubborn in his philosophy, but not in his execution. That makes him the best. Ten Hag knows he needs pace and power in the Premier League. He knows that there's an adjustment there. There are many people who question whether or not he will understand certain fundamentals about switching leagues. In the Dutch league, Ten Hag has the benefit of using smaller, more technical players. These are the kind of things you can't always get away with in the Premier League. As much as you need technical dominance, you also need really good physicality. But this is something Ten Hag clearly understands. So if he makes a switch, he'll very much be able to bring that to Manchester United. So you're probably thinking, Levin, sign him up. A manager who's elite when it comes to tactics and coaching, someone who's unlikely to have howlers in the transfer market as long as he's backed. 21's loading, bring him into Old Trafford right away. And as much as I partly agree, we have to be careful. Unfortunately for Ten Hag, his success at Manchester United won't just be down to how good of a coach and a tactician he is. Ending this club's trophy drought will also depend on his ability to deal with big personalities and handle pressure from the media and fans. How will he respond if a player like Bruno doesn't adhere to his tactical requirements? Will he be strong and back himself or will he back down? When results ultimately aren't going our way, which will happen along the journey, how will he respond to the pressure from the fans, from the media? Will he be able to adjust and make sure he bounces back? Or will he crumble under the pressure of the bright lights of Old Trafford? The reality is these are all questions we can't answer now, but ultimately they are questions that Ten Hag deserves to answer. You won't find a manager who is as elite as him, tactically and from a coaching perspective, in the market. And for that reason alone, he deserves the opportunity to be the man to bring United back to glory. Honestly, if it isn't him, I don't know who it's going to be anytime soon. And look, Eric Ten Hag coming in will be a monumental step in the right direction in our pursuit of glory, but it's not going to be easy. He has so many players that he has to deal with. And so check out this video right here on your screen where I discuss every problem with every player in the squad that Ten Hag would have to deal with once he comes into the job.